Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be working here in the entryway. Um, it's not much of an entryway. I think that's why it's so hard for me to fix it up, but recently I had thought it would look good to have a cabinet, a cupboard of some kind here, just to provide some storage for us. And I think it would look kind of okay against that wall. And I had looked in the local antique malls, couldn't find anything. So my motto is if you can't find it, make it. So that's what I'll be doing today is going out to my workshop and trying to make a piece of furniture for this space. Trust me, it won't be anything fancy, but I'm gonna see what I can come up with. In case you're wondering why it looks so bare behind me, I am working on fixing up the living room for spring. That will be in a future video. Can't wait. Spring is always my favorite season. So let's head out to the shop and see what we can do. So I think I'll be using this wood. I had gotten it for free from a neighbor that didn't want it anymore. And I want the look of kind of separate planks for my sides and the door of this cabinet. So I'm gonna see if I can find some good looking pieces here. So I want my cabinet to be around 14 inches deep. So that means I wanna make my sides, you know, around 14 inches, of course. And then the width, the wall space I have, I think around 28 inches will look good. So that will be my back. And last, I will then make my door. For now, I'm just gonna make the back and the sides, top and bottom. It's always easier for me to just kind of lay it out on the floor, kind of eye it and see how it looks. It looks like three boards are around 16 inches. I'm gonna go with that. A couple inches more should be okay. These boards are really, really dirty, and of course I don't want this kind of reddish stain on them. So to get down to the bare wood, I'll have to do a lot of sanding. I think I'm going to go and do it outside. It's still kind of cold out there, but I just don't want that dust and dirt in here. I don't want to breathe it in, so if I'm on the outside, I should be okay. So what I'll do is cut my boards to size and then sand them. That way I'm not sanding pieces that I won't be using. So far I need six boards for my two sides and then I'll have to pick out some more for the back. I'm trying to use the nicest boards for the sides since that is what we'll be able to see. There is some work involved here as far as removing nails and screws. Definitely not one of my favorite jobs. So here are the boards that I plan to use for the side of the cupboard. Uh, these are looking really good. Now for the back, I just basically sanded to get the dirt off. I didn't sand down to that nice color since it won't be exposed anyway. I am planning on using two by fours to make my four corners of the cabinet, like the inside corners. And instead of using a full, you know, two by four for each one, I'm going to save my supply and cut them lengthwise in half. And we did end up investing in another table saw. Not sure had I showed you guys or not, but our old one had given out. So now I do have a new one to work with, which is awesome.
So just to get a better picture of how this will all be put together, I'll try to kind of lay it out here um, and explain the best I can in case any of you want to try something like this. But I have my four corner pieces here, which I just cut in half, the two by fours that I cut in half. And then here is my pile of sideboards. These are the ones that are sanded down to the prettiest wood. And these pieces are the backs. Again, just sanded to get rid of the dirt. Didn't necessarily do it to bring out the nice color. So I'll go ahead and lay out the back here. So I'm trying to fit these pieces together to get the least amount of cracks in between the wood. I mean, I do want that look somewhat, but um, it's pretty, some of these pieces are pretty warped, so I'm going to have some cracks. So as you can see, this will be the inside of the cupboard, and these 4x2x4 four by, by four pieces will be along the edge here, and then my sideboards will fit on the outside like this. That way I'm covering everything up, I'm not seeing the edge of my backboard. So let's go ahead and put them together. I'll be gluing the pieces and then nailing them with my air nailer for the most part. Maybe a few screws here and there just for reinforcement. I'll also be fitting some of the pieces of the cut up 2x4 uh, through, throughout the middle here horizontally and that will be a place for my shelves then to rest and also hold the wood together at the same time. Today I will be using my Senko air nailer. Normally I just use what I call my little pinner, but I want to use something a little more heavy duty for this project. And I was so impressed, a couple years ago I picked this nailer up at a garage sale. I think I paid $30 or $40 for it, which is an awesome price. These are normally really expensive. To reinforce these pieces, I will be putting screws in the sides. So here's the back part of the cabinet all put together and reinforced with screws along the sides. As you can see the boards are longer than the actual frame part here and that is to then hold the either top or bottom. Did that on both ends. Here I am the next morning, 
ready to fasten my top and bottom to this cabinet. And I'm just using random pieces of wood, uh, three quarter inch thick that I had around here. I figured, you know, I wouldn't see them anyway. It doesn't matter if they don't match. For the trim along the front, I will be using the same wood as I use for the sides and the back. So I need to go through the whole process with removing old nails and cutting them to size, which is 69 inches long, and then sanding the pieces. So what I have here is this wooden box-like thing. As it's lying here, it looks ominously like a coffin, but can't wait to set it up and make it look like a cabinet. But what I want to do here is fasten these pieces of the cut-up 2x4 to the top and the bottom. If I fasten them to the top and bottom here, I will have a place for my trim to be nailed to. So here's how the cabinet is looking so far. Uh, definitely really primitive with those cracks in between the boards, but I think it's coming together nicely. I'm impressed so far. And my next thing to do is to put the door on. And I think I'll go ahead and set the door inside my face frame here. Like the door would actually be flush with this frame part. The other option would be to set it on the outside overlapping some of the frame here but I think it'll look better with it being inside and just from past experience I know I'll have to make the door about a fourth inch smaller than the actual opening. So what I have here is the frame part of the door and I'll just be fastening the separate boards onto this frame. The frame is cut to the size that will fit perfectly into that opening.
So the inside of this cabinet now has a coat of polycrylic, which is awesome. It nicely sealed those boards. You know, old wood has a tendency to keep on giving off, you know, dirt. And the polycrylic took care of that. I still want to put shelves in here. I just chose to wait until last. That way it was easier for me to finish the inside without having the shelves in my way. And now I'm ready to work on the outside here. And I'm thinking I kind of need something. I'm almost debating putting a row of numbers uh, on a couple of the boards, maybe giving it that old, you know, industrial look almost. Everything, you know, looks the same all around, like the sides and the door. And I thought maybe if a few of the boards would have numbers on them, it would kind of, you know, break it up maybe. I'll probably get out my Cricut and cut out a stencil and then paint some numbers on here. And if I don't like it, I can always sand them off, I think, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I feel like it might look okay. As you can see, definitely nothing fancy about this cabinet overall, and especially not on the inside. 
I am just using old closet doors. It's that hollow kind. I love those for shelves. I just cut those to fit perfectly in here. I'm not even gonna fasten them, just lay them on top of my uh, wood, the cut up two by fours. I get questions sometimes about the skirts that I'm wearing and the one I'm wearing now is actually a new style we have available on my website in case you wanna check it out and I will talk a little bit more about that later. I added the wooden block to keep the door shut and it also gives a nice old antique look to a cabinet like this. I neglected to sand the inside of the door, like the wood pieces, so that's definitely something I still want to do. I don't want to see those that reddish stain plus those marks on there. I thought it would be handy to have a mirror hanging on the inside of the door. I found this one at the antique mall. I think I paid $6 for it. I have this old suitcase that I had previously painted white and I thought this would look good on top of the cabinet, maybe with a welcoming quote on it. I use my Cricut to cut out these words and the decal is available on my Etsy shop in case you're looking for a quote for your entryway or somewhere in your home. I got these bins at Dollar General. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how the cabinet turned out. It's definitely a far cry from being perfect, and it may even be just a little bit too much on the rustic side for what I normally like for our home, but I think it's gonna work. Right when I brought the piece in, my oldest son, of course, thought all it needs is just a half moon shape on the door and we're good to go, but hopefully the look has changed since then. One of my favorite things about a project like this is, of course, the fact that I barely spent anything uh, the wood, of course, I got for free, and the handle and the hinges, maybe a total of eight to ten dollars, and then the bins were four fifty a piece. Uh, the two by fours were just laying around the shop. I'm not sure what those would have cost. I guess that would have been an expense, but overall, just barely spending anything and having a piece of furniture in here for us to use, awesome. That is pretty much it for this video. I do have one more thing I wanna mention before ending here, and this is on a complete different note, but the skirt that I am wearing today is one that I have available on my website, and we have been working for the past few months on changing and altering the patterns. We had been having issues with some of the sizes were fitting larger than normal, and we were getting some returns where people said they were too big. So we tried to adjust that, and we actually ended up making a complete new pattern for these skirts, and I'm really excited about them. I can actually wear them before I was not able to wear the size small. What I'm wearing here is a size small, and we ended up putting a wide elastic along the top, and I'll try to flash a picture on the screen here. I like it so much better. I wanna say they fit more like a pencil skirt, but yet they're not narrow where you almost can't step. To me, they're just right. I feel they're so comfortable. So I wanted to mention that we don't have a lot of them in stock right now, and we just have listed on the website pretty much what we have in stock. I do have a few new colors available for spring that you might wanna check out. 
Uh, the one I'm wearing is a color that we had with the old style and it was one of our best sellers. Uh, just a really pretty green and white striped. I realize not all of you are interested in skirts, but if you're like me and you enjoy wearing them, make sure to check them out on my website. I will link it down below in the description box. I have one more spring decorating item I quickly want to show you that is available on the Etsy shop. I only have a limited amount of these cute little wooden bunnies, and I think they would make such great spring decorations or around Easter. Uh, they are painted white. The bunnies come plain, but if you want to add the word hop, I have a separate listing for that, and I'll make sure to link all of that down below in the description box. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.